Hi guys, welcome back to Keeping It Real Estate with your hosts Brandy and Justin from Team Grande at Remax Escarpment. Um, this week's topic, we're going to be talking about uh, the housing crisis. It's been a booming topic in the past couple of months. Um, we'll dive deep into that. We have our story of the week. Um, we don't have much going on just because it was the holidays, so we took a good break. And then, uh, what was the last thing we were going to dive into? The housing crisis. Okay. Other than that? Stats. Stats. <laughs> <laughs> what do we talk about every My week, brain. Brandy? My brain, I can't take brain. <laughs> First week of January, that's yeah. the vibe, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, still trying to get your brain out I, of the uh, I moved, so I moved during the holidays, and that was chaos. Um, I haven't moved in three years, so it's a big move. Yeah, I've, I've lost a lot of things. Mm -hmm. If I could give one really good piece of advice, have a set box with all your like really important things <laughs> that you promise yourself you're not going to lose because, yeah, I've lost something that's like really close to me and I'm really sad about that. But hopefully, it, hopefully it turns out. It'll turn out, yeah. Yeah. My holidays were pretty low-key. Not yeah. much happened. Yeah. Much like the uh, the real estate market. Yeah. Not exactly. much happened at all. Exactly. We, uh, what did we see? 29 new listings. We had 29 new listings last week. Mm -hmm. 33 sold. And the average sale price was 961. Yes. Um, it's obviously a high average sale price, 961. We were seeing in the mid eights beforehand. Um, this number is just overinflated because it's such a small sample pool. Yeah. Right. When you're only talking 29 listings or even you know 33 solds or whatever. Yeah. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but this is typical of this time of year. I mean, it's not very often we see listings come up Boxing Day and the, you know, sell by New Year's. The number of listings typical, uh, but what were they saying from December to January? The market's gone up 20%. Yeah. That's not that I'm nervous, but. Yeah, and from year to year, it went sorry, 20%. It's, it's, it's still yeah. going. So. Yeah, it's going to keep going. I think it yeah. is. I don't know. Which, I mean, like, we may as well jump into the housing crisis on that topic. Know, because yeah. <laughs> cause we don't see any signs of this thing slowing down. I mean, we always talk about interest rates. Everybody always says that is yeah. the main indicator of what's going to happen with the market. But I don't know if I really buy that because we've seen in the past where if these interest rates do go up. They might go up to, you know, 3%, over 3 Um but the market was still flying. Things weren't slowing down. I know you had a couple of points like you wanted to talk about, um, so I'll let you mention them instead of me. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, what, what's your take on this? What's going to happen? What the, um, the reasons are? Is so, it going to keep going? Yeah, so uh, I have an article that I'll dive into that was just released um, a few weeks ago. Um, so it came out in the Toronto Star. Um, Tim Hudak, I think his name is. Um, he wrote it, uh, the solution, the solving the Ontario housing crisis, starting with banning single family home zoning. Um, you can go read it yourself, but just a, a few key summaries are that um, half of Canadians 45 and older are younger, sorry, have considered moving to other provinces. Um, and his point was, if the next generation of skilled workers and entrepreneurs um, have a huge problem it might cause a huge problem for Ontario economic um, prosperity. If, if everyone's leaving, all our skilled jobs are leaving, um, they're moving to provinces where they can actually afford a mortgage, what, what's going to happen for our economy down the road? Um, that, that does make me kind of nervous because mm -hmm. we're, we're in that age bracket, mm -hmm. right? What, what does that mean for our future and for our kids? So I think it's something um, that urban planning really needs to start looking out for and should be concerned. Um, his other point was that, um, uh, so they're having like an action starting with a pro-growth pro policies, um, and that will be to eliminate the exclusion, and this is what we've been talking about time and time again, we need to eliminate, eliminate the exclusionary zoning in growth, growing cities, aka Hamilton, Toronto, the surrounding GTA. Um, so there's a really good example. New Zealand actually has a law that al now allows up to three dwellings on the same lot zoning. Mm -hmm. So why aren't why aren't we doing that? Like mm -hmm. we're, if we're if we want to pass laws where we're not going to allow urban sprawl into the farmings, which is fine, we need farms, and we'll get into that later. But we need more housing on land because not everyone wants to live in a condo. Um, no, no, not a lot of people can like 
who can afford like, you can if you can build a me mega house and tear down a bungalow to put um, a massive house on a property why why can't you put other dwellings on a property as well it just doesn't it doesn't make sense and that they're archaic rules and mm. uh, we're gonna start seeing moving forward they need to revise the um, the what you call that I like that name? archaic Arch rules it is like <laughs> was that Tim Budak's word no. archaic no, no. they uh, so the Ontario <laughs> Planning Act it's revised every 10 years um, I think policies need to start looking at that and whether they mm. need to revise it yeah and I think that's a big thing the city of Hamilton, I know other cities have, but the city of Hamilton in particular has implemented secondary dwelling units, which this helps with the rental market. So this came into effect, I believe it was April of last year. We've seen a few conversions since, but what yeah. it's doing is it's allowing people that have a single family zoning, uh, whether it's a townhouse, a semi-detached or a detached, it's allowing you to put a legal accessory unit in your uh, dwelling. So this isn't, I mean, like a legal basement where, you know, typically you want to put a bedroom in the basement, you needed a certain size window, whatever. Yeah. This is to make it a full on rental. So, I mean, you have to have proper insulations, proper soundproofing, electrical, everything has to be done. Um, this is gonna help with the rentals, I think, because A, well, it's gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna create more affordable housing because mm -hmm. somebody that has a big house and they wanna maybe convert some of it into rental, yeah. not only helps them with income, but also provides another rental unit. I think last year we were short something like 700 rental units in Hamilton Is really? for the demand. Yeah. So adding these rental units is a huge step in creating housing um, for those people. And then number two, what this is gonna do is because you have to go through the permitting process, you have to get city inspections. This yeah. means that people are actually gonna provide livable rentals, yeah. rentals that aren't falling apart, rentals that don't have dangerous electrical, making sure that the proper escapes are there, the proper fire preventions. Yeah. And it just from a safety standpoint, and I mean, providing good housing for people is a huge step. Um, and that's in terms of helping affordability with renters, but when we talk about affordability with homeowners, it's yeah. a whole different ball game because yeah. our average sale price is so high. We are running out of land. Um, I know that it was denied the vote to expand yes. into the farmland. Um, which I mean has its its pros and its cons. The con is now we're gonna have to infill, but we don't have the zoning, the regulations, anything in place to uh, kind of go with that. I yeah. mean, you have all these people, you know, look at all these East streets. You have these small 900 square foot yeah. wartime homes on them with backyards that could fit easily another 900,000, 1200 square foot house. And, uh, but it's just not there. It's just not a possibility. Yeah, there's right? no there's no yin and yang here, and everyone everyone's so scared about like you were saying, the infrastructure of um, let's shove everyone in. It doesn't work like that. The, mm. That's not how policies work. Um, there still has to be regulations. Zoning still follow crazy criteria. I don't know if you've ever gone and tried to get like yeah. zoning changes before. <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of work, and obviously they're going to have to change like the timeline for that. But um, right now like it, it's still pretty i knew somebody that had strict. a two acre plot of land in flambro he wanted to sever it into one acre each it ended up costing him eighty thousand dollars just for the severance and it took about a year because they had to do soil samples yeah. they had to do tests all this stuff and just the process and the price was crazy because that prevents here's somebody that has a big plot of land i mean yeah. they're still gonna just an acre and an acre it's not like he's filling yeah. in a lot but yeah. still yeah. he's providing another option yeah. and the city's just making it so incredible incredibly difficult for that yeah. to, to happen to be yeah. achieved so i think uh yeah that's a big portion and then all this tied in now with immigration um which we don't see slowing down and hamilton is a big hub for immigration yeah. i mean toronto is but then it always pushes this way yeah right exactly. it comes from there this way so i mean if that keeps climbing yeah and like, so we're gonna keep bringing people in and, and you have to because for economic development and growth of a country, um, no matter what anyone believes, you, you still need immigration. It, it's flux of people. It's just how growth works and economy. Mm -hmm. But um, in Ontario, we're restricted, right? In the North, we're restricted by the Green Belt. In the South, we're restricted by Lake Ontario. So, and then on each side, we have provinces. Where are we gonna go? Mm -hmm. We, ha we have to go somewhere so I see both sides and in fact like my family home um, we actually built 
five, I think it's five or six acres. Um, if anyone knows where the end of Dundas is in Cope Town, it's right on the cusp of country to town. And it took five years just to get a permit there. Mm -hmm. Five years and then they built the house within eight months. It's crazy. And uh, it's just like so much you have to deal with just to like, so people think that like we're just taking over farm. We're not. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time for that to process and, and people are fighting it really hard and we're gonna run out of room. Um, but like I also have the other side of that. So because because I have yeah. like, you know, because my family, that's where we live and everything. Um, being out there, I have seen that side of enjoying um, what it's like to be able to go farm to table. And I, I do really appreciate and value that. And I am kind of worried about where our food sources are going to be in the future. And um, if anyone from Hamilton, you're kind of probably aware of the Stop Urban Sprawl Hamilton. Um, it was a 90% vote against urban sprawl into farmland. So yeah, it's great. But um, if we're going to do that, we, we need that yin to the mm. yang. Like I said before, we need to change the zoning or what's going to happen for our future generation. Yeah, and I mean, when you think of infill, a lot of people just think skyscrapers and yeah, you know, like if we're not going to expand, we're just, oh, we're going to build in, we're going to put up these towers. But not everybody wants to live in a condo. No. Like not everybody wants a little one bedroom, 700 no. square foot condo. We I used to, but to like you don't always want that. <laughs> yeah, I will eventually grow older, you, know? you get kids, yeah. that sort of thing. You need a house. Yeah. And it's just, it's not there, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. And uh, I know, like, I think even you mentioned earlier, people calling it a bubble. Like this, yeah. this is a bubble, a bubble, a bubble. I started real estate now, what? 2012 and back then people were saying it's a bubble yeah really? I remember yeah it was like oh we're in a bubble <laughs> Ten years ago? we've had the biggest climb in history it's gonna burst it's gonna burst and then the competition started mm -hmm. and everybody was like oh they're paying over asking for homes I remember back when we were selling houses on the east streets for you know if you got 210,000 you were making out great back then for and a little bungalow on the east a million streets of them? and it was like oh it's a bubble and then prices went up. Yeah. And then they implemented the foreign buyer tax, they raised the interest rate, and that did absolutely nothing. In fact, what that did was it basically stalled everything because everybody speculated that yeah. this market, okay, they put in these rules, the market's gonna go down. Everybody waited for something to happen. Six months or eight months or something went by, nothing happened, and then we saw another wave of competition. Yeah. So. That's why I don't think interest rates are going to do it. I think no, it's to solve, I don't know, more housing, it, period. Yeah. I, I believe that's going to be the only thing that really solves it. More supply. It's supply and demand, grade 9 economics. When we take economics, grade 10, <laughs> 11, whatever it was, that's supply and demand. Yes, exactly. Basic economics. Yeah. If the supply's not there, the demand's there, hey, we're going to be paying these like, high prices. Unless we become infertile and stop having babies. There's <laughs> there you go. There's, you can work on with that all one. the conspiracies out there, like we're always we're gonna need housing, and that's just the way it is. So. Yeah, yeah, and I do believe Hamilton was undervalued for years. Absolutely. I always thought that back when we were, our prices were so low, and you could pick stuff up on the south end near uh, like, uh, like what is Crown it? Point. Crown Point. Like, yeah, even south. Uh, St. Clair Boulevard, oh, that yeah. area around there. Like really there was these stuff. huge two and a half the story homes. Stuff. Yeah, they were going for. <laughs> Uh, you know, in the hundreds something thousands for like a two and a half story, six bedroom house. Now yeah. they're going over a million. Yeah. But Hamilton was undervalued. I think it caught up, but now we're starting to get it's we're feeling the pressure. Yeah. It's getting when you're looking at a new townhouse, a three story back to back, no backyard, going in the high seven hundreds. Some of them with double car garages are going in the eight hundreds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um even you made you made a really good point to me because I haven't um Crown Point, like I, I don't know why I seem to like really draw to that area. I love it because it's really good for first time home buyers. It's still one of the cheaper areas in Hamilton, even though they're still going in the sixes now, high five sixes. And I just got a house for a client that closes in a couple of weeks. But you made a really good point to me that, um, what do you mean this is like the growing area? This was the growing area 10 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I think I might have an old video on it. Yeah. I might have an old video talking about how Crown Point was going to be the spot. And it's still the spot. <laughs> it's still the spot. Yes. Bye there. We should Come pull on. that up. And <laughs> that's it. Paste it in. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I think that's all I had for that. I think in the next year or so, we're really going to start seeing a shift in policymakers, and um, we have to do something. Yeah. Or.
I don't think there's going to be a bubble. Nothing's going to burst. That's what we're taking home here. It's just, no, who knows, thing, I mean, yeah, yeah we, can, we can never say yes for sure, but things have to take a shift. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, thanks for joining us again this week. It was nice being back in studio. Um, yeah. That was fun. Be sure to like our videos, subscribe to our content if you want to see more. We're going to be doing this every week. We're going to be improving on them every week. Yeah. And we're so excited for this year to get rolling. So anyways, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good night.